Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy, the largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week, I wanna go ahead and cover a topic I covered a couple years ago, and that is using dog bones, which you guys either call reducers or adapters. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the biggest dog bone out there that I see that a lot of people use is when you have a 50 amp RV, you know, an RV rated for 50 amps, but your service is only 30 amps. Now that particular adapter we call a reducer, okay? You have the capacity from your RV or the potential to try and draw 50 amps, but your supply is only 30 amps. How does this work? And then what are the considerations? So let's go ahead and get in. Now, for those of you that have a 50 amp RV, you know that your plug, right? You know, your plug that you have actually has four different stabs to it, right? You got two hots, one neutral, and the ground. When you use your reducer, right, you're dropping it down to three prongs, right? You got your hot, you got your neutral, and you got your ground, okay? We pulled the sheathing off because I wanna show you, you don't have four conductors, you only have three. That means that one of these here is sharing the power. So let's go ahead and look at this. How does this work? On a 30 amp service, you only have one hot leg. That's the black wire. Well, how does it go to all of your rig, right? Because if you have a 50 amp service, you have two places or two prongs, right? Two hot legs. Well, what they do is they take this black wire and they wire it to both sides. That means you have a maximum potential of just whatever's coming down that 30 amp line. Now, if we look at Watt's Law, we know that 30 amps times 120 volts gives us 3,600 watts. That's all that you're gonna get in that RV. The reason why I wanna talk about this one here is this is the one that we had the most problems. You see, you are used to 50 amp service. And whenever you go over to a 30 amp service, you are limited. It is like putting yourself on a diet. And we all know how that works. So when you're using adapters, especially reducers, what you really need to consider is, is how much power you're drawing. And I hear this a lot, but people will say, as long as you only run one AC, you're safe. That is not true. When you are used to 50 amp service and you hear you can only run one AC, that may be the case. But if you turn on the microwave the same time that your air conditioner is running, you have over potentially mm. overloaded this circuit, okay? Because your microwave draws a ton of power. It draws up to 1500 watts. On a good hot day with your air conditioner, you can pull over 2,000, maybe even 23, 2,400 watts. So now you're well over what this adapter can actually handle. Now here's the problem that we have. A lot of our breakers fail, and they fail either too soon they pop or way after, way over their amp rating. Now guys, I know a lot of people think that breakers are our safety device, and they are but they are not foolproof. And I've got a ton of those where we run amp test on those and they don't trip at their rating. Sometimes they can fail way above 30. I've had them hit 33, 34, 35 amps. Well, when that happens, the wire becomes the weak point. How do I know all this? Guys, I get these in all the time from our, uh, from our students where we have burnt up uh, connections. Now, sometimes that may be because of a failed breaker. Sometimes it's loose and dirty connections. So while we're on this topic of our reducers, make sure that you look at the condition of any of your um, adapters, reducers, and even your power cords, and make sure they're clean, that they are straight, and they're not brown, because all of that be, you know, creates some type of resistance for electricity, okay? So this is what I want you to understand, that when you have a 50 amp service and you're using this reducer, it's more than just saying, well, you can run one AC. Okay, only an AC. Now your lights, that's 12 volts. Your fans, that's 12 volts, only an AC, okay? Can you get away with your TV? Sure, but if I just say only your AC, then you're much more limited to what you're gonna turn on and you're gonna be aware of it. Yes, even your refrigerator, you're gonna keep that on, okay? But don't run that refrigerator, or don't run that air conditioner and the microwave, okay? We hope that the breaker trips, sometimes it doesn't, and it is our cords that become the problem. Now, for those of you that maybe have a 50 amp service and you're going over to a friend's, which we actually call, you know, mooch docking, okay? 
Again, people would say, and I see this all the time, well, don't worry about what you turn on because the breaker will trip, okay? I have a situation here where this was a 50 amp service, the dog bone down to a 30 amp service, and then of course they use the puck to drop it down to a 15 amp service. I can't pull this apart anymore. It is melted together. And again, you would think with all that heat that that breaker would trip. Didn't trip, okay? Don't know what caused this. I don't know what caused this. I'm not saying the breaker failed, that's what caused it. I'm saying we don't know. Just be aware. This is what I want you to know. Adapters are okay. Adapters can, you know, it can run an air conditioner, but air conditioner, understand your refrigerator is always on. It is always on. Now, is it always pulling power? No, but we don't know when it's going to turn on, so we just assume it's always on, right? Air conditioner on a 30 amp service, refrigerator, TV, okay? Those three items, lights, no big deal, okay? But don't run that air conditioner and that microwave. When it's time to go, use that microwave. Turn off the air conditioner like they turn it off here. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. Well, did you see the sweat? That's how hot it is in here because they won't turn on the freaking air conditioning. Turn off the air conditioner like they turn it off here. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe we have limited power here. I've got all these LED lights that, you know, create a lot of, you know, demand. Can't run an air conditioner. God forbid.